Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about playing video content on your Mr. FPGA, updates to the PC88 and Super NES save state cores, NetBSD on the AO486 core, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs, things like full Mr. setups, accessories, I awards, and more. Now let's get to the news. Spark2K06 is an FPGA developer that has brought us the PCXT core and also created an alternate Mr. firmware that integrates Zapparoo support. If you don't know what Zapparoo is, it is a new name for the Tab2 project. And with this project, you can launch games via NFC cards. What if you want to launch movies instead? Well, Spark2K06 showed off his method of launching movies with Zapparoo on the Mr. FPGA. He also created NFC cards that have labels for movies on them giving the feel of having a physical movie collection. Keep in mind that the ARM chip that's on the DE10 Nano board is not powerful enough to run HD movies, so you will have to stick with low res content, which I personally feel is best for this use case, especially if you have a CRT, as it will hide many of the imperfections of low res content. It is recommended to use videos that are at a resolution of 320 by 240. This is possible through a pull request Spark 2K06 made to add 320 by 240 video playback support via mPlayer. There is a thread on the Mr. FPGA forums that discusses this and the appropriate information for you to implement it. User HS Newman on the Mr. FPGA forums has been able to get the Unix-like operating system, NetBSD, working on the AO486 core. When looking at the virtual hard disk name, it looks to be a NetBSD build from 1999. NetBSD's model is, of course it runs NetBSD, meaning that it's been ported to many hardware devices. When you check the list of devices it's been ported to, you can see they keep true to their model. It's been ported to Pocket PC PDAs. These PDAs run an early version of Windows Mobile. There are also ports to the Sega Dreamcast, Nintendo Wii, Atari Falcon, Commodore Amiga, Acorn Risk, Sharp X68000, and so much more. Several of these ports are for systems supported by Mr. So it will be nice to see people getting NetBSD also working on the Amiga, Acorn, and X68000 core. Now to me, using this OS will be more of a curiosity. I've never used it before, so I don't know any software that's made specifically for it or how compatible it is with BSD and Unix software. But I always enjoy just browsing around an OS I'm not familiar with. It reminds me of the time when getting my first PC and just trying to find everything that Windows 3.1 and DOS had to offer. I eventually did try this VHD, but I had no idea what I was doing. I do have command line experience with Linux, so all I really used were the built-in Unix tools. I tried to see if there was an X server installed, but I couldn't find any. Have any of you used NetBSD? Let me know in the comments, I would love to know what you used it for. I'm assuming this OS was mostly used as a server OS. I did browse the file system and found an X server which should give me a GUI to play around with, but it would not boot up. Would be nice to get this working. A VHD for AO486 is available on archive.org, so you don't have to install the OS. You can go straight to using it. Thank you HS Newman for creating it and saving us time. DE10 Nano and QM Tech FPGA board owners who would prefer to use a USB-C power adapter to connect their systems can now check out RetroFrog's USB-C to 5V barrel adapter. Quantities were limited and the items sold out quickly, so hopefully stock can be renewed soon. RetroFrog eventually did a restock, so I suggest you periodically check for stock updates if they are sold out by the time you check. So Spark 2K06 developed a way to launch videos via Zapparoo. Now Christoph Helms on Twitter developed another way of viewing videos on your Mr. FPGA. This other method is done via Plex. Plex is a media server that you install on your PC to host your content such as movies, TV shows, and pictures. There are clients for almost any device that will let you view your content anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. Christoph created a client for the Mr. FPGA. Again, the DE10 Nano ARM CPU is pretty weak, so only low-res content will be watchable. The great thing about Plex is that it can automatically transcode your media to a resolution that your device can handle. Christoph only tried SD content so far and also said that Plex transcodes well to 240p. Everything is accomplished via two scripts, one for CRTs and one for HDMI. The HDMI script does currently have an issue that shows most content has black bars around it in 480p mode. 
However, I do feel that this is best used with a CRT because you will be limited to low res content anyway, and that content looks much better on a CRT. Taki Udon did a YouTube audio interview with Aiden Walls that goes into his experience with product development, ethics in open source hardware, production issues, personal life questions, and more. Some of the interview goes into the Mr. Pi, but it is not exclusively about the Mr. Pi. Another update to the beta Konami bubble system core was released. On the post, Racky mentions that this core encodes and decodes the original data. It's an inefficient method, but that's the way the original system worked. The core is only available to Patreon subscribers during the beta phase, and also bubble system Gradius is not supported. However, the GX400 version of Gradius is playable on the Mr. FPGA, but I think you'll find it under the name Nemesis. The Super NES test core with save states recently got an update and there is a nice quality of life improvement. Before, you had to manually load a save states.bin file in order for the save states to work. Now that bin file is automatically loaded. Also, an issue where loading save states only seems to work after you create a save state was fixed. And there is now DSP cart support, so games like Pilot Wings should work now. You will need to download the test core manually and also the most recent version of the unstable Mr. Main for this core to work. The Mr. Laggy core has been updated with these latest features. SYS was updated to support new IO boards, an option to test the left or right side of the screen was added. There are now some markers at the edge of the screen so auto resizing displays don't get triggered. And the Mr. Kuhn mascot was added. Mr. Laggy is not a console or computer core. It is a core for the Mr. Laggy lag tester created by Martin Donlin. You can use it to test the display latency of your monitors and televisions to find the ones that give you the fastest response. Very important for retro games. I created a video on Mr. Laggy, so check it out if you want to find out more about it. The video goes over an earlier build of Mr. Laggy, so it doesn't talk about these recent changes that have been made. Yosinda and WWARC updated the PC88 core. Here is what changed. DDMO was added for the double track. There are improvements to the floppy disk controller, read and write modes were mentioned for this update, a menu to set where to connect soundboard 2 was added, Thanks to one of Hotego's sound modules, the OPNA sound chip should be complete, the F11 key has been assigned to help, mouse support was added, and there should be improved graphics. The PC-88 series of computers were a brand of Japanese home computers by NEC. This computer line had great third-party support and even had exclusive software developed for it from major developers like Sega, Enix, Square, and more. So that's it for this episode. Please also try to support Sorge, the maintainer of the Mr. Project, and other Mr. Developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. I also provide a link to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and this bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.